What's going on, y'all? And welcome in to a special episode of mm. Snaps, as uh, this is a big one, folks, um, as I get my windows in order here. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. I am T-Bob Bear. He is Aaron Murray. And this is Snaps, a college football podcast uh, produced and hosted and put together by The Volume, mm-hmm. uh, Papa Colin Cowherds uh podcast network which of course you can find great shows like uh club shay shay and all you know uh, nightcap and all the other excellent shannon sharp content everything else they got going on there now um i say a very special show because in case you missed it uh this will be our final snaps episode under the volume banner now we told you the other day okay it's like the old wolf of wall street meme uh we ain't going anywhere, okay? Mm. Snaps will continue. In fact, we won't even be taking a break. We will still be going live next Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And maybe we even adjust the schedule uh, even more based on how we want to do it. But uh, but we are no longer going to be partnered with the volume. So today, we're going to look back on the last couple of years uh, because what a fantastic time mm. it has been. A lot of good memories. It met a ton of great people. Uh, as I said the other day, uh, literal life-changing experience for me personally, certainly being here with the volume. Um, and we'll talk about what comes next and yep. kind of uh, what to expect if you enjoy the show and ways that you can uh, help us out. So what up, Will, Ben, Goat Dog, George, Emerald Lines? What's happening, everybody? Look at Emerald Lines. Let's go steps. Best, most entertaining pod in college football. We love you, Emerald. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hit the like button. Share it with your friends. Uh, Aaron, what's up, man? Master's Day for you, dude. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling? Dude, I'm feeling so good. I wish I was... Uh... I wish I was in Augusta. Damn it, Georgia, for putting your spring game on Masters weekend. But mm. uh, somewhat kidding. But I'm very happy to be. I mean, Georgia no, you're not kidding. So sh- don't no, no, I'm happy to be this, calling the a little bitch again about it. I, I, I no, no, sh- calm down. I'm happy to be calling the game. I'm just not happy that it's on the same weekend. Are you? Has yeah. anyone? I mean, you did seem actually very genuinely excited to call the LSU spring game last year. I did. Well, I got to so, see you. Got to go yeah, get some fun. Mexican, some margaritas. Uh, our you boy know, that Gussie. was one of the worst pictures Gussie's... I've ever taken in my life. My titties were popping in that white shirt that okay. I took with you and Jake. That that made me, um, I think, I think actually like a day or two after that was when I was like, I should start like fasting working out. maybe, uh, no, not working out bitch. Okay. I already was working out, but I did it. That, that picture of my titties did cause me to tighten up the diet a little bit, mm-hmm. which is, you know, that's, you have to have those low moments to inspire change. Sorry. Now, what were you saying about dusty? Dusty's gonna be on the call. There's FYI, he may be hitting you up. So, uh, okay, cool. For LSU, yeah. for LSU, for LSU. Oh but no, no like, I like I, spring games are fun because it's relaxing, and every spring game that I've called, I've been given access to be on the field. Yeah, so like behind the quarterback. So like I'm literally, you know, because you, you know the head coach is usually hovering somewhere around ten yards behind. Yeah. So I get to hang out with the coach, do a little bit of interview, watch it. So it, it feels. The adrenaline's a little bit more spiked up, kind of seeing the view from behind the quarterback in, which I enjoy doing. So true. I like that aspect of it. It's a little bit more relaxed. You get to know, um, you know, get 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 to kind of hang out with the guys a little bit more. So I enjoy it. Uh, once again, just wish it was not on uh, a time when I'd be, you know, either in Augusta or sitting on my couch drinking a beer, watching the Masters. Oh, this is pretty cool. Look at Maroney Lane Music in the chat. I was out of town playing music with Emerald Alliance at an Eclipse Music Festival. Had no service. Back at it, Snaps. What's up? That's cool, dude. So the Snaps community mm-hmm. former relationships within. Um, Simeon's music. I'd love to listen. Uh, I mean, you think you're pissed there, and we always talk about how just brutally awful it would be to be a college football coach, maybe especially an assistant. Mm. Although you're going to make way more money than everybody. It's like, can you enjoy the money being an assistant at Georgia? I would imagine basically guarantees you can get access to the masters if you want. Mm. And so you are quite literally losing one of your biggest perks for a day that to be honest, you probably don't really give a fuck about. Mm-mm. Like you, no. the, the practices of the game have meant way more to you than does the spring game itself. And now, even though you're grinding film 24 mm-hmm. seven, you're calling 1800 high school kids a week. You just want one weekend where you can yep. take advantage of your status and it's ruined by having to go between the hedges. Dude, 
my boy Bobo, and this is rumors, Bobo did not tell me this, but I did hear from some people that he was going to go to Berkman's on Sunday, and and that doesn't seem like it's going to be happening because he's going to be entertaining high school kids. But let me, let me pose this. Do any coaches like the spring game, or is it just – to me, I've always thought of as it is for the fans. This is an opportunity for the fans to get in the stadium, get a peek yeah. at some players, some of the, the mid-year enrollees, maybe see a couple – you know, freshman that redshirted the year before, but from like a coaching standpoint and from a player standpoint, the only thing I was saying about it was like, can we just get in, get out, stay healthy, and then Saturday night post spring is like a big party. Like we're about to have some fun now. Yeah, well, and 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 it's one of those things where the yeah, because ironically, it um because it is so public, you can't actually do the work that you want to do, right? Like mm -hmm. it's uh. It's it's a situation where you don't want to show anything because it's off season preparation. Like mm -hmm. maybe you have a, a player or a package, or you're leaning into a new system that you really like. You're not going to see any of that mm -mm. come Saturday. You're going to see very uh, basic uh, formations defensively, very basic calls offensively. Now, mm -hmm. I will say this: I will say this. Um, you can glean info on an individual standpoint, right? Yes. Yep. Um, and it's not always the most accurate because some guys will fall off as it gets mentally more complicated. But like, if you have a guy and he's just out there uh, and just a base pass rush situation and he's dominating the tackle, well, that's a pass rusher. Maybe you can start to get mm. a bit excited about if you're a running back and you take a power like 60, 70, 80 yards, that's going to make you excited. Your receiver, your big one handed catch in the corner of the end zone. Like mm. these are all still well-earned plays. And because there are fans in the stands, players are going hard it's mm -hmm. just that the coaches aren't necessarily trying to manipulate the situation as much uh to put you in a position to succeed as you would in a true game day like well, i remember for me trying to become a starter it would have been my retro sophomore year um or no no sorry retro freshman year spring of retro freshman going into retro sophomore um that spring game actually ended up giving me a ton of confidence because mm -hmm. we dialed back all the mental stuff. It was easier to make the calls and, and I played very well and yeah. I carried that forward into fall with me and, and, and talking to my coaches after the fact, it actually did help inspire confidence in them as well that I maybe could be a, le a legitimate starter for that team. Well, it, it, it's not, listen, it's not a game day atmosphere. Like let's, let's be real. Like it's not, you know, for Athens or LSU this weekend, there's not 90 to hundred thousand people in the stadiums for these games. Sometimes you get that, you know, we've seen Alabama do that. We've seen Georgia do that. Like we've seen, Certain universities really pack out a stadium for, for a spring game, but it's still more than what you would get on average practice. You're playing in yeah. your stadium in front of your fans, and I guess it does give you somewhat of a gauge of who is what I always like to call a, a BP player, um, a batting practice player, a guy that goes out there and does really well at BP and hits it, you know, home run after home run, home run, but you put him in a game like situation, he can't hit the curveball. Yeah. Guys react differently in a game situation than they do practice I the lights are on and there's fans in the stands and mom and dad are there and your girlfriend's there and you're trying to maybe impress or do too much or your butt gets a little bit puckered up compared to normal practice. No, no. Do you react? This is a closer situation than a normal practice to that. So you do get a little bit of a feel like who can truly show out uh, and who are the true performers that do take their game to another level in front of the fans. Yeah, and you um look at this sweet chess.com shirt I got, by the way, dude. And you uh you also I it's it's the little things too, right? Like you said, you're in the stadium. And I remember for me, it was the first time where I'd ever played football where I could look up at the Jumbotron and like yeah. see the replay of the play mm -hmm. and be like, oh shit, look at that. Like I just did that, or oh, that could have been better. And, and so th there are little fun quirks, but again, it's something kind of world changing but there is some value there it's yeah. maybe just in light of having to skip the masters that value feels a mm. little less than um i think alabama is alabama going to put 90k in i mean don't they, they normally i, they I don't do. know i mean uh, under kalen de boer i would imagine do you think uh, fans are excited for the spring game in alabama uh i i i mean they already pack out a day generally, don't they? Like LSU yeah. fans never win. I, I've always feel like it was maybe like 15 to 20 K if that. 
Um, LSU last year was only one side of the stadium lower bowl that they set people in, correct? Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not. Right. It's it's not very big. Generally, there's like baseball going on that people want to go to, mm-hmm. um, and just other spring sports that uh, people are into. But I mean, that's a good uh, question. Like, do you think do you think Alabama fans are they excited for the change, or are they kind of already mentally preparing themselves for a possible drop? this upcoming season so you may not see the enthusiasm Mm -hmm. in tuscaloosa for the game no i already think that alabama fans are uh masturbatory about their spring game attendance like Mm -hmm. they love being like we fucking pack it out because we give a damn right and so when you combine that with a uh with a coaching change i expect it to be pretty damn full if not completely full i I feel like that's something that they kind of hang uh their hat on if you will um Fox is televising their Ohio State spring game. And, and look, you know, the TV partners love getting a little excuse to talk about football and put football on the yeah. TV. And it's I, I okay, where, where's this other question I wanted to get to? Um, do you think spring game spring ball games are worth it to go to as a fan? I was thinking about driving to Happy Valley on Saturday, but I'm on the fence. It's about an hour and a half drive. Mm, well, I gotta be honest. I don't know that I would do an hour and a half drive unless you just want to go to campus and make a day of it. And you have other stuff you want to do. Maybe yeah, you want to go like to a different restaurant. Like more, yes. You bring the kids like yes. it, great for the kids because it's going to be way more chill so they can yeah. run around and, and they're not really always going to discern like what's it's a not real stressful. game. And what's not. Yeah. yeah. You're not, you're not, I agree. Like, I think it's a good family day. So if you do have kids or you want to go relax or say you went to that university I mean, hell in the South, the weather's going to be perfect. It's going to be 70, 80 degrees, sunny. It's like to be on in Athens or in Tuscaloosa or, you know, Baton Rouge or any of these other schools in the Southeast that have their spring games this weekend. You get great weather. You get to walk around campus, go downtown, get some food, hang out, and you get to go watch a game where you're not fucking stressed. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You You just just, want to walk in the state and just say, like, yeah, just enjoy football without worrying about any sort of consequence. Yeah, so just watch the like pigs fly story. around a little bit. Yeah, I think it's great. See, but the, the thing fun. is, too, though, to be clear, like Athens is one of the cooler towns to go to. Like yes. that might be worth an hour long drive just because you want to go hang out in Athens. Uh, I can't speak to Happy Valley. I can't. I mean, I don't know that I think that Baton Rouge would be worth it, but maybe I've just, you know, lived here too long. And so mm-hmm. it's familiar to me, whereas I didn't. Like I wouldn't drive to New Orleans for a spring game, though. Um, to You're be saying fair. from New Orleans to Baton Rouge? I don't think I would do either. Even if the yeah. city I was going to was New Orleans, I still wouldn't go if I wasn't having to cover it yeah. uh, for work. But yeah, better parking than Ben Collinsworth. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is why I don't get the A-Day thing. Because fuck me, you are not getting me to deal with 90,000 people worth of logistics to mm-hmm. go watch a spring game. Although, again, this year with Kalen DeBoer, if there ever was a year, this would be it. Um, okay, there's a few different stories to get to. And then we'll get into some of our favorite moments from the past and what comes next for uh for for snaps um first off we said it when we talked about it a couple days ago we said it was firmly in the rumor department we were essentially in the junior high bathroom spreading gossip mm-hmm. and uh, it appears the gossip is unfounded as usc defense tackle bear alexander came out yesterday and said he is not transferring and that he is looking forward to winning a national championship at usc so uh sorry to lsu fans and all those other defensive tackle hungry fan bases out there barry alexander not going to be an option yeah that's unfortunate especially for lsu uh who really 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 needed him to hit the market there'll be plenty of other guys that do hit the market um i i think this was it was an interesting move because i don't think either of us are high on usc this year um i don't think either of us think that usc is a true contender in the big 10 and we saw the win loss total. I think we, we showed the graphic the other day. They're like, what around that seven, eight mark. Yeah. They're right. Yeah. They're like 6.7 or 6.9. Yeah, or something. They're right under seven. So like, I, you know, I, I, I don't know what his true motives are. Is his motives NIL? Was there maybe some more dollars that he was trying to get out of USC to, or the collective or whoever there to, to keep them there? Like, was that the main goal? Because if it was to win a championship, I think he kind of knows that that's a long shot there at Southern Cal, but there's also the, the it's also messaging. a long shot at LSU. It's a long shot at, te- I mean, yeah, but it's a lot closer at LSU question. than it is at there, or you go to Ole Miss, you, you could go somewhere and let, which I know you're just wanting LSU, but you could go somewhere 
and put yourself up for an opportunity to not only make money, that's true, but to win a championship. But I do think from an, an, an overall narrative standpoint, this is a kid that transferred multiple times in high school, I believe, that already transferred yeah. once in college. Transfer again. This would have been his seventh, next level. This would have been his seventh transfer in seven years had he actually yeah. transferred. I don't think that, that narrative school. sits well in the NFL. Just gonna throw it out there. Um, well. uh, a lot of people saying that this was just a uh play to in the chat right now that this was just a play to get more money. Um yeah, I you know, cynically, I wouldn't doubt that. Also, the rumors were never uber concrete, right? Like maybe some displeasure was voiced and then uh, it kind of spun out of control. Like I'm not 1000% convinced that he got more money or that he did this just for more money. Although I'm not naive enough to say that he did it also. So we don't know. So I guess all that does matter is the actual fact of the matter, which is Bear Alexander saying he is staying put at mm -hmm. USC which is big for Danton Lynn and that entire USC defensive staff as they look to try to write what was a um, an awful defense last year. Better than LSU's, but an awful defense uh, nonetheless. Um, speaking of USC, Bo Kennedy says, uh, rest in peace to USC legend OJ Simpson. It's very Dom Kleeman energy in terms of framing that. OJ Simpson passed away, died right before... Well, in terms of when it was announced that he passed his family um, a couple of hours ago, right at the end of my morning show, uh, putting out there that at age 76, OJ Simpson has passed away from cancer. Um, it's weird to talk about. I was a kid during all the murder trier stuff. I remember uh, exactly where I was when the Bronco chase was going down. Um, I would probably be more willing to be nice to OJ or maybe give him some sort of bit of the doubt had he not chosen to later write a book called If I Did It that then went step by step how he would have murdered these two people. He's alleged that's murder. It's like, I, that's pretty fucked up. Like, that, that's, uh, wow. that's pretty fucking awful. Wow. And uh, and so the jokes uh, are indeed uh, popping off right now uh, in regards to uh, to OJ Simpson. Mm, but um, yeah. there's, there's There's a handful of events that you will remember if you're kind of, you know, I would say right around our age and our age, older, yeah. and older, yeah. yeah. Uh, especially if you're a sports fan, and this, uh, this definitely being what the white Bronco. Uh, it does make me re want to rewatch OJ Made in America. I haven't seen that in many years. Maybe the best thirty for thirty documentary there was ever made. Uh, right there with the U, though the U dealing with much less serious, um, uh, top uh, kind of subject. Was it matter. mostly sports, or did it mostly have to do with that the incident? Um. No, it's 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 mainly about. Uh, I mean, I guess it encapsulates all of it, but it's mainly about the crime. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, you obviously have his his football background as the background of who he was and kind of this being this superstar. But no, it's about it's about the crime, how you kind of lean into racial tensions as well as some other interesting strategies to get out of said crime. Um, mm -hmm. It's worth a watch if you have uh, never seen it before. Chances, well, he did a good job at Naked Gun. Yeah. You know. I mean, he was like America's spokesman for for a bit there. Um, it did give us this, though. One of the greatest Norm McDonald jokes of all time. Uh, this is at the ESPYs back in, uh, I guess it's the late 90s, because that's has to do with Charles Woodson. Hit the tape there. And there's Charles Woodson. How about that? Oh, what a season he had. Great, Manny. He became the first defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. And congratulations, Charles. That is something that no one can ever take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, in which case... <laughs> all bets are off. <laughs> it's a word of advice. Folks, before we can begin handing out our awards tonight... Oh, my God. Getting no Griffey's reaction it, like, was like... Oh, <laughs> God. Um... Also, mm. the the it's 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 even a bit funnier in the context of Reggie Bush's Heisman also mm. being taken away because that like that joke can be expanded to like, uh, yeah, no, the only way it can get taken away is if you murder your wife, waiter, or you or. rent a home for your mother. Mm. Uh, I mean, it is that look, the Heisman, the, 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 the Heisman trust has let you know, and the NCAA, we're drawing mm. a line in the sand. Mm. You cannot murder and you cannot 
get affordable mm. housing for your mother mm -mm. and help you out mm. your family uh, based off of your incredible talent and all the money you're making everybody around you. Those are the two things we just cannot have. We, we draw. All right, so let's let's with with the 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 Manzel push coming out with like you know when we talk about if if, if Manzel gets to keep his for blatantly telling everyone that yes I was I received money while I was at call in College Station like do you think Reggie gets back like real talk like does Reggie get the Heisman back eventually Zach says those are equal crimes in my eyes <laughs> um, does Reggie get it back uh, he he I mean I this is one of those things that it's like. It's so. Uh, you think I, the NCAA would, would ever admit, or at least go to, the no, extra effort to, to to do it? We talked about it a couple of weeks ago, and I think I and I stand by this. I said this is objectively probably the single dumbest thing in all of sports. Mm -hmm. All like go go even even beyond like the steroid gatekeeping of the baseball mm -hmm. Hall of Fame, all this sorts of shit, like. The single dumbest thing I can fathom is Reggie Bush not having his Heisman. Not just because nobody is morally or ethically offended by him, by what he did, right? Just getting mm -hmm. maybe some benefits and whatnot. But really, because if you accept Reggie Bush's punishment as just, then you have to believe that every other Heisman winner in history never got any benefits. Never got a meal, never got a car, never got any homes, never got any of this shit. And then you have guys like Manziel actively out there talking about everything they did get. So mm -hmm. it is so fucking dumb. It's dumber than Pete Rose. It is, it is, it is, again, it is, I think, the dumbest thing in all of sports. So I, I don't know how to answer, will he get it back? Because I can't fathom that he already doesn't have it back. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's what I can't wrap my head around. What's it more likely to happen, them going back and taking Manziel's away or them giving Reggie his back? Uh, I mean, Menzel's literally I got on the show and said, I was getting paid, and this is how I duped. Like, he blamed me live. He did an OJ. He, he did it. He did an OJ. Narrative. If I did, yeah, except he's yeah. just saying, I did do it. I did do it. <laughs> and here's he how I did the whole this narrative. I mean, I remember talking about, it, like, oh, Menzel, he comes for money. That's why he's been able to you know, go to Vegas and party and do this and that. Like, it's not the fact that he's getting paid. He comes from like this oil family money, and they're like, "No, we created that fucking narrative. Like that was not true." Um, not like saying he's like from the other side of the track. Like, he came from a good family, but like not that kind of money family. So um, he lied to you. He literally lied to the NCAA and created this false life so that he could get paid I, okay. So all it, this it, money. In terms of what's more likely, though, I do agree with you, or I, I don't agree. I, I think it has to be more likely that Reggie gets his Heisman back. For two yeah. reasons. First, the NCAA is feckless, right? They can't enforce shit anymore. It doesn't seem like all of this would maybe be one area in which they legally could. Um, but also giving Reggie his Heisman back is such a PR win. Mm -hmm. That's what I don't understand about all this. Nobody is going to be upset if you do it. No. All people are going to say is, um, yeah, okay, about thank you, time. congrats. It's about damn time. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I have to fathom that he'll get it back eventually, but we, we will see. Um, so OJ Simpson dead at age 76, Bear Alexander not transferring. And uh, another random little bit here. Uh, did you see the, uh, did you see Northwestern football? Maybe mm. the surprise store. We didn't talk a lot about him last year, but. Probably the biggest surprise in all of college football, full yeah. stop, right? I mean, Pat Fitzgerald was supposed to be that school's greatest coach ever. Um, he was turning in garbage for the last couple of years, really three of the last four years, just yeah. absolute garbage. And yet when they lost him, it was still like, oh my God, that's the best you've had. Northwestern sucks. They're not going to be shit. They lose him because of a really hilariously weird story where the hazing was out of control. Again, I, I think it's, so funny to think about it. If you remember the stories, one of the things they were doing called the gauntlet and the mm -hmm. scene put on like scream masks and they would like beat you while you were naked. And I'm just laughing so hard because I'm thinking about like, uh, <laughs> well, it's just like, like you're so tired from practice and you're like, Oh, come on guys. You know uh -huh. what time it is. And like somebody's handing you the ghost face mask and you're in upper class. And you're like, bro, I just want to go play call of duty. No, nah, come on now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to beat these freshmen. Like, okay, fine. Fuck it. But put on my Freddy. <laughs> mask, get the work. But, uh, but no, they should have been awful. Uh, and then they went five and four in the big 10. Yeah. 
yeah. and a tough Big Ten. Mm-hmm. And so uh, what? how does Northwestern seek to build off of this hype? They announced plans to build an unbelievable new stadium. It's going to be amazing when it's done. But we learned today that in the interim, Northwestern is going to be playing the next two football seasons uh, in their practice facility. Uh, at their outdoor practice facility, in which they will have some sort of temporary seating. And if you look at pictures of the practice facility, Aaron, I don't know that you can get like more than like 5,000. <laughs> I mean, like it, it, it like 5,000 is maybe even pushing mm-hmm. it. Like it is legitimately going to be uh, like, a, like a big high school game for the next two years going to home game at Northwestern. It's gonna be on. It's gonna be on uh, Lake Michigan, though. So it should be nice. It should look cool. Good. Setting, good, nice. yeah. Great setting. Great setting. Um, how many people were they getting to the games in the first place? Like, were they really stressed about getting fans in the stands? Well, it depends, right? If you hit, let's say, ten thousand, that's kind of acceptable to me because then that could be a pretty intimate, fun environment. I mean, yeah. to your point, that's or would not you play, nobody. Though? Or would you play? No, I'm saying if you, you get 10,000 at that field, if you get 10,000 no, no, at I'm saying, that like, where are you going to find a place, even if it wasn't on campus location, to get a, unless you're going to go play at Soldier Stadium? No, 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 sorry, sorry. What I'm saying is the practice facility, like you said, is located in a beautiful oh, setting yeah. right there on the lake. It looks awesome. If you can get 10,000 people on that practice field, that's actually kind of tight. But you have to build something, though. I mean bleachers. I don't know temporary bleachers. I don't. I mean, I'm sure ten thousand seats for temporary bleachers. Yeah, I right. To, I, don't, I think you're like fairy tale land. Like, okay, in the next four months, we have to build a ten a, a miniature ten thousand. But I guess they do it for um, hell, they do it for the damn golf tournament. I was just at there in, in Phoenix. Like, I thought that was all year long. They build that stadium, that mini stadium, leading up to the tournament. Like, I, I believe that Northwestern, the money that they have, they could have the smart something people a little bit that more. they have, no, that they that they can they can put up, up something temporary that should be able to hit a respectable. The thing is, if you hit ten thousand, then it maybe becomes kind of cool because it's a beautiful environment, yeah. it's intimate. Uh, that way, it's full for whatever that's worth. But if you're talking about like five thousand people, then that just becomes a little sad. Mm. Uh, in my opinion, but, but here's to hope. I mean, wh- wh- why am I blanking on the, uh, on the head coach's name? Uh, arguably should have been coach of the year last year. Here's mm-hmm. to hoping that he can deal with this. Cause this is kind of a bad break as you would want to, uh, build off of what was a, a again, a just wildly successful year run compared to what your expectations are going to be. Got to be hard to recruit to say, Hey, come here for two years, yeah. play in this bullshit. But then after that, you will be playing in like a top. Well, it's kind of like line. it's like Vanderbilt. I mean, I, I had a game last year in Vanderbilt. You go to Vanderbilt Stadium is is there's construction. There's a crane holding up the jumbotron, and then ninety percent of the stadium is away away fans. Yeah, what's well, a worst environment to cover to host a college football player? Who's a tougher job, Northwestern's coach or or Clark Lee at Vanderbilt of hosting a recruit during this transition period within a stadium? Um, Would you rather have Vanderbilt, I mean, with which can hold more people, but ninety percent of it's away fans. Still, constructions everywhere. Or Northwestern, where it's five thousand of your own fans, uh, in in like little mini bleachers. I actually think that um, Northwestern is still tighter. Yeah. Uh, I think. I think. I, I mean, again, five and four in the Big Ten last year, so already just way more competitive than is Vanderbilt within their conference. And uh, both cities are cool, like Chicago and Nashville. I'll call that a wash, although Chicago is kind of one of the great old school American cities, whereas Nashville is kind of like the new kid on the block. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, But but yeah, I think I think Northwestern simply because they're more competitive, it's easier. It's going to be easier to recruit there and your options surrounding you are the Big Ten. It's like maybe Chicago has a lot more allure compared to some of these other Big Ten cities than does Nashville compared to some of these other SEC uh, settings. So, you know, I'm kind of thinking about this all just yeah. live on my head. Somebody says, why not play at Soldier Field? See, I think that would be a mistake because you play at Soldier Field and you put like what? Like, it out. Yeah, no, you put like fucks. 15K. That's going to feel so fucking sad. Go play, like go, ideally. Go play you, the you, soccer you, stadium. Like go find say, the, they, like they MLS like stadium. stadium. Yes. Which I think like a school like Vanderbilt, which I've I've said this to like my boy CC Childers who lives there 
was like, why didn't Vanderbilt just do that? Knock it down, go play at the soccer stadium for a year or two, build a similar style of soccer stadium on campus, 25, 30,000, super intimate on top of you. Like for those who watched um, like the XFL, the, the, uh, the team in Washington, D.C., they play in the soccer stadium. And it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, they did great. Yeah, they it's packed incredible it. Incredible environment. Yeah. Like that's yeah. what a Northwestern should do. That's what our Vanderbilt should do. 20 to 30K on top of you. Very fun vibes. Um, and, but man, just not doing it. Uh, that's a, well, I mean, me, that's, look, that's a way know. you can you can get Vanderbilt fans, or at least the city of Nashville, on board with Vanderbilt football. But I mean, who knows if the MLS team wants to do it, right? I mean, I'm sure yeah. they pack it out already. Like, I'm sure it's a way more successful ticket than is Vandy. Why do you want to let Why Vanderbilt football dip? come fuck up your field and stuff? Yeah, most of those are turf, though. Do they play on turf in the MLS? I'm sorry, guys. I don't watch a ton of MLS. I like. Uh, I really like soccer. I, I just Atlanta don't follow does. any leagues. Atlanta I mean, does. Yeah, that's right, because they play in the Mercedes-Benz. Uh, yep. That's right. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, that was crazy. I don't know if the ATL United still are, but a few years ago where they were on that championship run and they're packing it out, 73K yeah. they're in getting the stadium. The yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, nobody goes to the Falcons again. True. Um, also, they kind the of... Bear left. Yeah, not since the Cannon left. I mean, who mm -hmm. could forget that final 3-13 and 13 season? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, he wasn't the starter for the majority of that, or was he? I don't remember. Um T-Bob always looks like he's up to something. Well, it's because generally I am. Uh, I always have something percolating in the background. Zach says St. Louis had like 45K for their UFL XFL game. Yeah, uh, to be clear, the Battlehawk fan base in St. Louis wow. is awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's because they feel slighted. Uh, also, St. Louis, despite not having a big population, they're right there with New Orleans. There's not a lot of people. I mean, in the actual city itself, I think you're looking at around like, and I'm, you know, again, I could be wrong here. I'm just coming on memory. I think you're looking at around like 500,000, maybe getting into like one to 2 million. If you're talking about this greater St. Louis 286,000. Okay. And then give me like a greater St. Louis area. Um, well, the because, greater St. Louis, 2 million. Okay. 2 million. There you go. So that is a thing where like those, you're not supposed to be able to support that many professional teams with those numbers. Mm. But I saw something the other day between like a blues game, um, uh, the UFL game and Cardinals, uh, Cardinals game. They had over 200,000 fans Ooh. go to sporting events in one weekend. Mm. I mean, St. Louis is sports crazy and they have latched on to the battle Hawks. And uh, my other QB one, I do shows with AJ McCarron, dude, you know, I mean, Aaron, where are mm -hmm. you at, dude? Mm. come on bro he's great t-bob's gonna just leave me for aj <laughs> uh, shepherd ducks chip kelly at ohio state urban's at oregon right now wait hold on urban's at oregon what are we talking about what what does that mean belly's at washington right now what the fuck is going on boys legendary coaches oh okay 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 urban must be visiting because i did see this did you see bill belichick at washington practice the other day yeah mm -hmm. you know full you rock out okay. here yeah yeah so he's saying kelly at ohio state urban's at oregon now belichick's at washington what the fuck's going on legendary coaches at some interesting spots yeah i think um well the chip kelly thing obviously that's like in a actual isn't, isn't, job. Is belichick's son's coaching at washington now Oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot he's the DC. Yeah. Okay. So that 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 makes sense. Uh why that's going down. Uh gotta be pretty cool if you're a Washington player, though, to have uh oh, Bill yeah. Belichick hanging around practice, dude. The goat. Um, and all the insight that you could get there. And uh Texas Rock says AJ greater or Aaron greater than AJ. Yeah, I agree, dude. That's my boy. That's my what boy. um do you think Saban's going? Obviously, he's going, but do you think he's on the field for a day? Up in a box somewhere, staying away. No, nah. nah. you think he's front center attention? Uh, I kind of feel like I he, think he has to away. go to the game. I think he has to go to the game. I'm saying he'd you? go to the game, but do you think he's on the field? Or do you think he's in a oh, box? No, like, no, 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 he's in a box. Okay, he's he's in a suite for I sure. would hope he would do that too, just to like get the attention off of him, let the game happen, bro. He's on the field, all attention. I was gonna say, him. it is a psychopath move. If Nick Saban is on the field for the Alabama spring game, like on that the sideline, 1, on the thousand, field, like on the sideline. No, yes, no, exactly. That one that, that is the you field. Think he's that in the 1, booth. He'll be in the booth. He'll be in the booth. 
Uh, I think in the booth for most that of it. as Nick Saban joins college game day and looks to transition a bit, he has to be a little careful with how involved he's going to be with Alabama on the day to day. Do you think also like shit? what do you think? Fans, um, I think people, res- at least I do like, I respect Saban so much. Like I, if he wants to be a little bit biased to fucking Alabama, like I, I could care less. I think, I think I, yeah, you probably look, I, hmm, let me think about how I would answer this. I, I truly could care less if Nick Saban is on game day every weekend picking Alabama to win every time they go around the horn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it, it is expect? to be expected. Yeah, it is yeah. to be a bit expected there. I, I, I'm not going to trash either. the man for that. Dude's one of the smart, probably the smartest coach that's ever played, you know, coached the game before. No, I know. But, I still think, though, if you're going to be talking about all of college football as a whole, you can't be, like, actively consulting Alabama. He has like an Herbie, office in the stadium. Herbie loves Ohio State. He's not actively consulting Ohio State all yeah, the time. Yeah, but he doesn't have the same. Was Herb Tree, like, I don't know the stats. Like, yeah, he no, he like definitely doesn't have the connection 10. that Saban has. Yeah. Yeah. He was the greatest coach of all time. That's um, seven also, do you think different. that Saban, I kind of agree with Texas Rocks. I do think that Saban's personality is such that I could see him being like um, almost wanting to actively fight against people saying. Like when fired, Georgia right? faces Alabama in week four, is he picking Georgia or is he picking Alabama? I mean, he can't pick Georgia, right? There's no way. There's no way. If he picked Georgia, but I mean, if you're say if you're gonna say it like it is, I think we can all agree. I mean, we'll see. What uh, can like. we agree here? Do you want to play this game again? I know it happened last year when y'all that, tried this. Simmer down. Let me just say this. Let's just say for three weeks of the season, Georgia's kicking everyone's ass. They kick Clemson's ass. They look amazing. Carson looks like the first quarterback taken the NFL draft. Perfect, flawless. Alabama comes out and it's just not really clicking in the yeah. first three games. Is he picking Bama or is he picking Georgia in that in week four? I think he's still got to go Bama there, dude. See, so how uh, I don't PG know how says unless he goes full heel turn. Yeah, no, to be fair. I mean, but like, like, okay, like, uh, like, like, like Zach says, I think it says, I think Saban will be a little biased, no more than Des Howard, though. Like, yeah, like Des Howard's hard. Yeah. Bro, when LSU was on that 2019 run, you had Ryan Clark, Marcus Spears. I mean, the entire LSU media yeah. conglomerate was constantly like, fuck you, Joe Burrow, go yeah. Tigers. Y'all when it comes when it comes to 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 uh to broadcasters, not not going, you know, putting the fan hat on too much. There's certain people that have to be kind of create that separation from their university, you know, because they have to build that credibility up in the media space. Like, hey, I'm not yeah. a homer, my university. I'm truly am for the, whatever. Saban does not have to do that. Saban is different. He's unique. He's a unicorn. Saban can be wearing a damn Alabama pin on his, his suit on college game day. I don't yeah, give a true. damn. He That's is true. the greatest college coach of all time. And he coached Alabama and won six national championships there. He can do what he wants because he's going to give incredible information for two hours and 45 minutes on that show. And then if he wants to pick Alabama at the end of it, so be it. I don't care. Uh, ben Collins says, kind of suspicious. ESPN took the LSU guys off college coverage after 19. Well, they actually in it right i mean spears got upgraded to nfl live which is a way mm-hmm. bigger gig ryan clark became one of the main everything guys mm-hmm. for espn and booger actually got put on college after 2019 right like that that's what booger does now is the college it is so, time. um now this would be the true lsu wet dream would be if ellis if saban would pick lsu over bama Mm-hmm. You, you want to you want to heal mm. the pain of the past for all the tiger mm. fans that felt so betrayed when he left for Miami and then said he would not be the coach at Alabama. Um, that would be so deeply, mm. uh, uh, well, it'd be, it'd be funny in a lot of ways, but God. I think a lot well, of LG fans would fans so the first time he doesn't pick Bama. I mean, you can't talk shit about him, right? No, no, no. Royal pain says, I bet he isn't on set for the picks at all year one. Well, then what are we doing? Saban better be picking these games. He better be picking like, otherwise what are we doing, dude? Uh, Nick says, I can't take game day seriously after a bunch of those fucks picked Iowa over Michigan last year. Well, didn't Iowa kind of almost beat Michigan? I mean, no. maybe almost beat is tough because they no. never really had a chance to they score 50, but the game, but the score wasn't crazy. No, but they never had an opportunity. They never had a legit chance to score points. Yeah. I mean, look, as somebody who played in a game where we didn't cross the 50, it's not a good feeling. Uh, you don't, yeah, not quite as close as the final score looked. Mm-mm. Um, mm. 
Uh, Goat Dog says if Saban ever picks against Bama and wins, they're tearing that statue down. Bama flags at half mast. No way, dude. There's no way they're ever tearing that down. Uh, all right. Let's get into some of our favorite snaps memories. And then, um, oh, man, we've been going for 40 minutes already. Sheesh. Yeah. And then, uh, see, so just so much fun, guys. And then we'll talk about what's next. Um, Aaron, to be, uh, to reminisce on the past, mm. I never, uh, I don't think you understand how nervous I was for the first show that we did here. Not even the first live show, the first test show in which uh, the producers and everybody that put together the show was going to be watching. Um, and I get the feeling from you that you have this irrational self-confidence, this, this QB one attitude. Um, I don't get a lot of imposter syndrome from you. I deal with a lot of that. And uh, I was so nervous. I felt like I was going to have an anxiety attack. I remember feeling like my heart was going to pound through my chest. Mm. I think I drank like two or three beers uh, before yeah. the show just to take the edge off. Uh. So I wouldn't be in my head uh, causing myself to have a panic attack. Did you have any such feelings for no. our first? Uh, for never, our first never, any, never, back? never any sense of nerves, but I will say this because I've always been very buttoned up on shows. And as you know, if you're listening to this, we, we keep it loose. We keep it fun as possible. Uh, the first time where I was like, have we gone too far? And I always tell people the story when they ask me, like, how is it working oh, with T-Bob? <laughs> okay, I, I mean, a, when I always get the question, like, how is it working with T-Bob? Like, what's it like? I'm like, well, and I tell this story. <laughs> this was post-vasectomy when someone came on the chat and was like, you know, like, why are you so happy that you're, you know, you got your nuts chopped off? And T-Bob, you go, well, because he can fucking come in his wife whenever he wants and doesn't have to care anymore. And I'm just like... <laughs> Once that line was kind of crossed, I was like, there ain't no coming back of like, we may be kicked off YouTube today. Like I was waiting for like YouTube to ban us, us get some notification or from like Con, like, hey guys, like I like the looseness, but like, we can't be talking about coming in our wives over here without like, some sort of repercussion. So, but we never I mean, got in trouble. So I was like, all right, here we go. It is We're honest though. It is We're honest. What's the, the, what's the only, why do you get a vasectomy? Yeah. So you can nut in your wife. Yeah. I mean, I'm just telling it like it is. Uh, Rojo says, why do you be so nervous? Is he on the radio? Yeah, I mean, that's what's crazy, right? Like, I'm on the radio to, you know, objectively. Well, I don't know once you get into download numbers, but a live audience, it's way bigger than what we deal with here. But, and and I love you all, though, by the way, we're going to be talking about how to continue to grow. But uh, that this was kind of, and, and this is why I'm so thankful to the volume and Logan Swaim and, uh, and Con Cowherd and Brumley and PG and Chris Tran, everybody else, the whole team is that for me, this was kind of my first big career break. This was the mm -hmm. first time in which, uh, uh, More because, national than local. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. Like I've been doing local radio since shit. I've been doing a daily local radio show since I was 23 years old because I got Ooh. a job that I did not deserve um thanks to who my dad is mm -hmm. uh and so i'm a nepo baby right uh and and everybody's like well you're you know they're always but again impostors or people are always like oh man you're really good like one day you're gonna you're gonna make it and you're gonna do this or that and like i don't know i was just like i like and even now i don't really care about making it what i want to do is make money to support my three kids and my family like that's all mm -hmm. i give a fuck about yeah. But I love this show and I have so much fun doing the show, but I was so nervous because I felt like this was the first time somebody bet on me and I didn't want to blow it. And I've had a lot of different partners at this point. Chemistry is a weird thing mm -hmm. and it normally takes a very long time to develop. And I didn't know what to expect out of Aaron, right? Is this going to be like your cool quarterback or your douchey quarterback? <laughs> Again, like I've said on Mixed. the show many Mixed. times, um, my one thing I knew about Aaron was that he had fucked one of my best friend's girls in college <laughs> that, that my best friend, that my good friend was in love with. And this is not a man who fell in love ever. And, oh, and so oh. I did not know what to expect. And I was uh, just uh, so pleasantly happy and surprised at how cool Aaron is. Mm -hmm. Definitely not one of the douchey quarterbacks and um, just a, just a, 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 a instant chemistry, instant chemistry. Yes. man. No, definitely instant chemistry. And I do remember when we were kind of figuring out the show, uh, the, the question was brought up like, oh, who's going to lead? And I was like, oh, I'll lead. You know, fuck it. Let's go. QB1 status. I got this. And uh, every day I am very grateful that I am not leading the show because you do such a good job at it. So 
Um, well, look, and that and that that was one thing that we were sitting down and talking about the show. That mm-hmm. was one thing that I was like, I, that's one thing I told the volume was that's what I want to do because I mean, I I host I host a radio yes. show every fucking day, right? Mm-hmm. So like, it's like okay, shout out chess.com, right? I just did that yeah. broadcast for them, and and that I was kind of playing color. And then after the fact in our post-show meetings, they were like, maybe next time we're going to have you host because like the chess guys, they got hosting awesome guys, incredible chess knowledge, way beyond anything I have. But if you need me to get you in and out of breaks, I mean, I fucking got you, fam. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, granted, it will, you know, you're also going to give me control to having conversations about coming in your wife or mm. the other day on hard the last five news, minutes I, when we talked yeah, some bullshit. Yeah. I saw a story about a, uh, uh, a couple whose home was raided. They were supposed to be like a really nice, normal family couple. And then their home was raided, um, because the husband got caught, um, following kids around in a store and jerking off. Um, real piece of shit. And then on the dude's phone, oh, they found a bunch of videos of his wife fucking the family's great Dane. Is what? there a more? Yes. She yes. was filming it. Yeah, he was filming it. And there were multiple videos. Like they they did this a lot. Um, How do you get a dog to fuck someone? I don't I <laughs> oh, shit. I, that's one of those things I've just taken for granted, <laughs> okay. right? Like I it's understand like, it's like a old... horse porn. Like, like how do you, how does the animal get that aroused for something that's it's, not their own? It's a great question because, like, I, I understand the old peanut butter thing from high school, right? Yeah. Where you slather yeah, yeah, yourself yeah. in peanut butter and the dog's gonna lick it off, right? Um, I don't know, Aaron. I just always took it for granted that yeah, it's a dog. Of course, they're going to want to have sex with the person, but no, I don't even understand how they know what's going on. Your great Dane just want to have sex with you. Do we really just want to send this show off on the degenerate top? And I mean, (laughs) I guess you have to kind of. I guess you have to. You have to kind of jerk off the dog first, like to to warm it up. You you have to play fluffer (laughs) for the dog. Um. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, anyway. Anyway. So, like, how do we? So that's the risk you run, though. If you're gonna let me yes. host, that's the risk yeah. you run. Yeah. Is running shit like that. So I would uh, say it is. What is today? Today is April eleventh. Football season is four months away. Yep. I would love to see us get to like twenty five thirty by end of next season. I think we could do it. I think so too. I think so too. I think we had incredible momentum as. Uh, Sorry, now chats just make me laugh. I think we had incredible momentum at the end of the year. Um, the offseason's been a bit of a slog, but shout out it's to everywhere. y'all. We hit the 15k number. It's everywhere. I'm even feeling it. I'm feeling all my shows right now. It's getting me yeah. down a little bit, but it's all good. It is what it is. Um, what's harder to get to the first 15 or the next 15? You think? I think there is an inflection point where you start to grow and it kind of tips over. So I don't know if it's the first 15 or the next 15, but I do think at a certain point you garner a number that when people see it, you're like, oh, that's this is like a legitimate show. And Mm -hmm. so they're more willing to subscribe, right? Like if somebody has 100,000 subscribers, you're probably going to be more willing to click subscribe on that than if they have two. Mm -hmm. So we are slowly but surely trying to climb uh, that mountain. But yeah, 25 to 30K would be would be would be awesome. Um, Yeah, I think doable. Again, I, I think we've got some very exciting plans for maybe working in some game streaming specifically. I want to run a lot of online 2v2s, Aaron. Mm-hmm. Me and you uh, teaming up online. Let's EA go. Sports 25, which we had some news on. Let me bring that up and uh, we can maybe touch on it. But yeah, so I, I think that's a good goal. And and uh, as in terms of what's next, we're okay, not going to stop the show. K is the next, baby. Let's go. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, but we are not going to, uh, we're not going to stop the show. I mean, our plans are to go straight into next week. You know, yep. we just got to figure out all the technical stuff. Um, and we're in the process of it right now. I think production values may change in the short term. Um, maybe be a bit patient with us on the timing of getting stuff up as we do. Then again, it's the off season. So it's kind of the time to do this. And, uh, and we are shopping it around to be clear as well. So yep. we may end up uh, under another uh, company or banner at some point, or maybe we don't, right? Either ways, um, we're going to, uh, either way, we ain't going anywhere. 
Yeah. And I'm very excited because I believe in this show and it's the most fun that I have. And, and really the best part about this has been to me, uh, and, and you see a lot of online creators saying this and it makes sense though, because it's, it's intimate, but the best part about this has been the community. Yes. Um, anytime somebody tells me somewhere random that they love snaps, it's me so happy. I'll mm -hmm. never forget, uh, the day after selection Sunday, a few months back when, um, or the day of selection Sunday, when is Florida state going to make it or they're not, I'm driving to Disney. I stop at a Bucky's and the fucking manager of Bucky's comes up to me and he's like, dude, what's up to you? I was like, yeah, man, what's going on? He's like, oh, I fucking love snaps. He's like, I'm mm -hmm. a huge Florida state fan. You think we make it? And I'm like, fuck yeah, y'all are going to make it. It'd be a high crime. If you don't make it, if this selection committee doesn't cho choose you college football's broken, mm -hmm. blah, 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 all this other stuff. And then I always think about my guy and I hope you're still listening out there because I, like not an hour later, it came up on the screen that Alabama had made it and Florida mm. state was left out. Uh, but that was just such a cool moment as, as fresh brisket was on the board here in the manager, stopped me as a Florida state fan and be like, dude, I'm a massive snaps fan. Like that mm. made me so happy. No, I, I, I do. I agree. Like the, the community is awesome. Hell, I got that. I remember the one time I was, uh, I was out golfing. It was at, at where we play golf and, and some old guy came up to me. He's like, fuck it. Like in his eighties. And, uh, he's like, dude, I love watching you in, in that, crazy motherfucker every day <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah this dude watches us and he's like yeah my, my my you know daughter or son showed me youtube and now i watch you guys every single day i was like hell yeah we've got like dudes in their 80s uh out here watching us and uh just made me crack up so uh yes we will keep it live uh i think someone in the chat said thomas yep. said whatever y'all do keep it live like that is to me that is one of the most special parts is, is interacting with everyone each and every day seeing the community grow um, so that was a special part about, you know, moving from the volume channel, which was great to obviously T this was, you know, this was T Bob's doing of, of really pushing, like we need our own channel, we need our own channel, having our own channel to build our own audience. That is our audience, not the volumes yeah. audience. I think has set us up to to really continue to run pretty hard. Over the yeah, that's maybe years. only one of my only regrets about the entire situation is if we could have moved on that faster. Mm -hmm. Where could we have been right? Because and that's just a function of all of us being out here in this new yep. algorithmic age in which we live, not fully understanding how all this works, where it's like, mm. yeah, the volume has 500,000 subscribers, but they're there for NBA NFL. or Collinsworth or NFL. They're not necessarily mm -hmm. there for, uh, for, for college football, which is a mm. bit more of a niche type of situation. Um, anyway, uh, so I, but, but whatever, better late than never. Right. I don't care. Yeah. We're going to live in the present. Oh, I'm yeah. super excited about it. Um, I think about it. Look, we, we've, we, we've had a couple of births, right? Our original producer, Ryan Brumley had a little baby boy in the midst of doing this show. I had a child in just awful timing. We had an LSU, Georgia sec championship in which we could have done all kind of live shows in Athens, in Atlanta. Mm. And yet I was in the hospital. Witnessing mm. the birth of my child. It was great, though. Uh, I'll never forget it. Watching USC get rocked by Utah and being pissed about it because I was a big Utah fan. And then and so we're going to keep live shows and we'll continue to we're going to try to continue to put up shorts yep. um, every day, breakout clips of the individual segments, because what the analytics show us are y'all, the live watchers are very loyal, very awesome. Stick around a very long time. But the growth is actually coming from uh those 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 shorts. individual videos and the shorts and stuff so we're going to keep uh well, I also too, I want to throw this out everyone like i know we we've talked about doing the gaming you know it's that's something we're going to do in the nca the the game comes out is do live gaming 2v2 all that good stuff have some fun playing the games talking shop talking game you know talking college football but like what do you guys want from us too like this one yeah. thing, this is a community like if there are certain things that we could possibly do um, or talk about, especially this summer when things are a little bit, you know, stale, uh, this is our time to really experiment before football season starts. So please, um, please, please let us know. Do you have a show? I mean, both of us getting vasectomies, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. And you should email, email, uh, snaps CFB. That's going to be the new name of the show. If we can get it, we're going to change it after today. Snaps, uh, CFB, uh, for all of your, uh, for any thoughts that you have on what the show could be, where could we go? Good, good ideas that you'd want to see. We'll, we'll, we'll have access to all of that. Um, 
Royal Paint does movie slash TV show live chat, et cetera. Now, if we ever did end up going like fully independent, like Patreon route, I, I think that could be some interesting stuff. Maybe some outside of football discussion. It gets a little weird again with the algorithm about mm -hmm. muddying up the waters going too much outside of college football. Now, yeah. maybe once the channel gets bigger, we can start to explore uh, some more of that, but we'll see. But yeah. Do, do you have a favorite show that stands out to you, Aaron? What do you mean? Like that we did over these past two years. I got a couple. Um, uh, post Colorado, post Colorado TCU yes. was electric. When I almost, when I almost missed my game, you know, yep. I mean, I was literally <laughs> sweating my balls off. Like, when is this game going to end? Because I actually have to go call a game. Uh, and then you know, you and I ended up having an incredible live stream after that Colorado win. Was it first Nebraska? Was that a game? No, no, it was TCU or it TCU, TCU Colorado. Yeah, where I literally showed up to my game. Uh, hopefully, ESPN's not <laughs> watching this like an hour before kickoff. <laughs> so, that was, uh, where Sharon had to drive me and dropped me off and then she like got stuck in crazy traffic and was like driving my truck which she freaking hate driving my truck so i was stressing about her driving my truck <laughs> through athens in traffic while also getting on to my game, game day, the absolute all, worst all time to snaps, be doing baby. that all for snaps uh yeah no, shout out to uh pg's mentioning the live show we did at walk-ons a couple of years ago it was very interestingly timed because it was right at the beginning of the show and so not that many people knew about it mm -hmm. we had some people show up and then we had a lot of people that were just there hanging out oh, yeah. and got to see snaps live that was a lot of fun um uh, del rice says to go back and look at t-bob's rant on georgia and bama fans after the natty uh yeah you know sometimes you got to put them in their place i think the Ohio State, Michigan shows were always very fun as well. Um, for me personally, the the show when we had Colin on after national championship, though, mm -hmm. you know, kind of wish Papa would have come on maybe again after this one. But uh, but after that first one, that was a big moment uh, for me. Certainly, just kind of professionally having him on and yeah. everything else felt validating in uh, in in many ways. So it's been a fun couple of years. But again, this is just the beginning, the beginning. Mm -hmm. this is just the beginning uh we ain't going anywhere if snaps will continue if anyone wants to make a snaps meme coin because i think meme season's really about to pop off soon you know mm. just, just yes know. yes please uh please uh let's that, that's that's the actual direction we're taking the show we're yeah. going to be a crypto show yeah. uh that that's going to be your bonus content. no one really has like sports memes you know so like I, we could be the first just saying uh, my favorite time is uh team of talking about wow well, we'll probably do some more like chill streams i, I i'm even though I've, I've cooled a bit on my world of warcraft season discover right now i can feel my hobbies always interchange i was talking to my wife last night i think your boy's about to start building and painting some more miniatures i nice. can't wait uh go make some bretonian army i got a big box just waiting to be put together at home but um yeah man and, and look i i really cannot thank uh Pat Gunther, Chris Tran, um, Danny Cardenas, Ryan Brumley, Adam Gracia, Christian Hunter, uh, mm -hmm. just the entire team at volume has been so fantastic over this last couple of years. And like I said, life changing in so many different ways. I mean, I got an agent because of the show. I never had an agent before. Mm -hmm. And now I suddenly have somebody out there who's like advocating for me and helping create me opportunity. Um, Abba says, T-Bob, we're about to start a new D&D &D campaign. What class should I play? I've been Ranger, Rogue, and Druid. Uh, I said it yesterday. I tend to I tend to lean towards magic users in Dungeons & Dragons because especially if you like to play a very narrative version of the game, you can just do so much shit with spells mm. as to really feel uh, unlimited. And thank you. For that, mm, Aaron, as if you uh, give a damn about what deity. Maybe, no, maybe well, one I, day. I, 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 this is the great thing. when t Today of all days, when T-Bob goes on his rants, I'm just watching the Masters right now. So Yeah, so he's fine. I can talk forever. <laughs> like, like, as long as I'm with it. And I'll just throw a couple of mm mm-hmms in here as uh, you know, people <laughs> make butts and shit. <laughs> What's, who, who's winning right now? Uh, who is up right now? I don't know who's up right now. I'm watching like whole four, five, and six. So they haven't shown like a... Total this score. I'm watching board. Fitzpatrick uh, <coughs> tee off. Mm, mm. Maybe where I'm at for the next couple of hours. It's not very healthy sounding. My boy Tiger um, tees off. Let's go. But, uh, but yeah, thank you all so much. We love you. Okay, so ways you can help out the show, though, in the short term. Um, obviously, again, algorithm, right? Uh, hit the like button. 
-hmm. share it with your friends. Uh, anytime you have a high like to view ratio that naturally pushes out the shows onto recommended channels. So like a lot of the people who watch Pate, when they get done with a video, YouTube will put our video in there afterwards because they know they're into college football. So that, um, that certainly helps quite a bit. Uh, if you listen on pod rating and reviewing always helps, that helps it gets pushed out as well. And so there's just a couple of free ways that you can uh, help out the boys here. And yes, one day I will get Aaron to do uh, a Dungeons and Dragons one-off. We'll set it up. We'll get it. We'll get a dungeon master, get a, somebody else in here with us as well. I know part of my take actually has done the D and D thing. And I listened to the first time my friend the other day and it's pretty, it's, it's pretty, I'm good. It's just fun. It's just so much fun. Anybody can play D and D as well. Um, all right. I think that's it. Sweet. Uh, I think that's it. You thank you so much. Uh, we will see you Monday. And again, a massive thank you to the volume by Monday. I believe snaps CFB, uh, is the plan on where you'll find it, but we'll continue to update you on Twitter and everything else, but we love you. Thank you for being a part of this. And, uh, we look forward to, the future. Mwah. Mwah. We'll see you on Monday.